hi guys so welcome back thank you so much for clicking so yusuf Ed is going to tell us true life story of how allah came through for him after taking his shahada after he converted to islam from christianity so let's check it out so why do bad things happen to good people okay. mm. and you say well how's that the beauty of islam the beauty of islam is that it totally and completely explains to the point that you can become happy not only with the understanding but with whatever comes wow. okay. because it's it's in the Quran that Allah explains your purpose ah. if you thought that your purpose of life was to hang around here and have a good time <laughs> waiting for a chance to get into paradise Allah makes it clear that that's not the case as a matter of fact in chapter 29 of the Quran the very beginning of it Allah makes it very clear that if you come to this correct belief that there really is only one God and the worship is really on for, for him then at that stage you're going to be put into some really big testing because as he says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif Lam Mim, Ahasab al-Nas an Yudruko an Yaqulu Amana. Do the human beings think they're going to be left alone just because they say we believe, and that they won't be put into a big fitna, as the ones before them were put into this big fitna to show who are the truthful and who are the liars. So you said, I believe. Okay, get ready. Because you now understand that it has to happen because it, this is a, a way for you to know if you really do believe. I know it happened to me personally, exactly like that. I came in and a brother, Muslim brother, came to our home right after I did Shahada. And he said, I want to sit with your family. I want to talk to you guys and tell you what's going on. Because all of us had come to Islam at one time. Alhamdulillah. He said, but I want to explain to you. Some big testing is going to come to you. No, he said, we've already been tested. We understand. Yeah. We know everything. He said, you don't really understand. I said, we've been through a lot. You don't understand what it took for us to get to this point. And we had had some business difficulties. We had lost, you know, some material things along the way and was really thought we knew what he was talking about testing little did we know we had no clue what was going to come next it became unbelievable the things that kept happening and happening and happening between July which is when we did Shahada and January January of the next year it's, what is that, six months? Is that six months? What could happen in six months? six months? Well, I'll tell you how bad it was. From a guy that used to have, you know, membership in these major golf courses, I lived on a golf course, walk out my back door, I was on the 14th hole of the Masters in the country club I belonged to in Dallas. Had my own planes, okay? Homes with swimming pools. You get the, you get what it's like, right? Nice. Huh? Six months later, I have an old school bus. That's all that's left out of all the inventory of all the vehicles I had. An old school bus. And it caught on fire. And it was about to blow up with 40 gallons of gas in it. And I pulled out the fire extinguisher. I was going to try to put it out, and when I pushed the button, it went, <gasps> it was defective. I didn't know what I was going to do. I got a tow truck. I got it out. I threw a blanket over it. Got a tow truck. Took it out to a junkyard. I was thinking, what happened? How could I be in such a shape, you know? Mm. Left the truck there and at this junkyard 10 miles off of the main drag the main road 
And I asked the guy there to give me a ride back out to the road, you know. Just give me a ride out to the road and I'll try to catch a truck or something and go back because, you know, got to get home, which was many miles away. Actually, I was in Oklahoma and I had to go back to Texas. He said, that's not included in the tow. I said, well, how much is it? He said, I don't feel like it. Just go out there and somebody will give you a ride. I said, go where? It's an old dirt road. He says, there it is. So I stood on the side of that dirt road and I was really thinking, what have I done wrong to be in this condition? A car went by. It was a lady in it. I didn't want to ride in there. You know, didn't even think about that. Then another car came by. Nothing. Then a small pickup, you know, a real small pickup came, had two guys already in it. The guy said, where are you going? I told him, up to the freeway, 10 miles. He said, okay, get in the back. There was no room to get in the front, get in the back. I said, there's got a lot of stuff. He said, just sit on the stuff, it doesn't matter. Bags, bags, you know, got back in there, these big bags. I said, what's that smell? Uh, it's these bags, they smell really bad, you know. So they started driving, you know, it was freezing cold. It started hailing, you know, little pieces of ice hitting me, hitting me, hitting me. So I have to crouch down like this to get away from the ice, but it puts my nose right by these bags. <clears throat> what do you think was in the bag? Fertilizer. Really good fertilizer. It comes from Kanzir. Pig poop. Now here's yours truly, right? I'm used to wearing heart shafter and mark suits. I'm, well, and I'm here <laughs> hugging a bag of <laughs> Yeah. And I'm thinking, what is this? It was so cold, my eyebrows got ice in my eyebrows, you know? And when we finally got up to the road, I I said, do you mind to take me just to the other side because I need to go. He said, no, we're going this way. By the way, Americans are really nice. <laughs> I got out, you think. I got out, they took off. And as I was walking under the bridge, I was thinking, Islam is the truth. Islam is correct. I can't find any flaw in it. I really spent six months really looking hard and a lot of the subjects that Islam teaches, it's absolutely true. There's no doubt. So what is wrong? What is wrong with me? What did I do? I had everything before. I come to Islam, I get nothing. What is that all about? Is God mad at me? Maybe that's just it. I found the right way, but he's mad at me. Alhamdulillah, that wasn't true. Because you and I know if Allah is mad at somebody... <laughs> I got a serious problem, not compared to that. Well, subhanAllah, I said, well, I, that's wrong. I shouldn't think like that. I went up the embankment, up to the main part of the freeway, tried to catch a ride. A big truck's going by. And it was getting cold again. And I was thinking, how? How? All of a sudden... A red car came over the top of the hill. Like Lamborghini. You know what's Lamborghini? A real cool sports car comes over the top. And goes, I said, wow. Because, you know, back in the day, hey, that was yours truly. Here he goes over the hill. And he stopped. And he started backing up. Now I'm thinking, uh, uh, why is he back? Who is this guy? He's going to back up. He don't want to pick this. I look terrible. And this guy's going to back up. He's probably going to run over me. Probably, you know. Or maybe the, something we used to do when we were kids, you know. You back up to somebody and they come running, trying to get that. You know, say, you tired of walking? Yeah, run a while. <laughs> I didn't really think it was going to be anything good. But the guy got back up to me, rolled down the window and he said, excuse me, can you help me? What do you need? He said, do you mind to ride with me because something's happened to me. I can't keep my eyes open. It's only 5 o'clock in the afternoon, but he said, it's just like my eyes keep shutting and I've got to get up to Dallas. 
and it's a very long way. Do you feel like you could talk to me, keep me awake so that I can get there? I would really appreciate it. Let's see. I don't know. Do I want to get out of this nice cold weather into your nice warm car? Let me check my calendar and see if I'm busy. Turns out I've got an opening here. I'll get in the car. I got in the car, shut the door, and I'm still thinking, it's brand new, by the way. You can smell the new. You like that new leather smell? You got in there. Now what? This is, what's the law doing to me here? Mm. We start going along, and the guy says, please talk to me. I really am falling asleep. Start telling me anything. I said, about what? He said, well, let's start with how you wind up on the side of the road and why you smell like that. <laughs> I said, there you go. <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> Let me take you back here. <laughs> you want to talk, I'll talk. I'll tell you everything I know. I guess we could teach the CIA how to get stuff out of people. Now just put them in the back of a pickup with a bunch of pig fertilizer. They'll tell you anything. But I went along with him and I began explaining the events that led up to me being standing there. Which started out about a year back when my father wanted to do business with a Muslim. And how I tried to convert the Muslim to become a Christian. How a Catholic priest got involved in the story. And before you know it, the Catholic priest accepted Islam. Wow. My wife and I accepted Islam. Then later my father accepting Islam. Oh. But then other things started happening. Our business down by Mexico went bad and somebody ripped off all our stuff, oh. stole our things. I had a brand new Suburban. It disappeared with the paperwork in it and I couldn't trace it because I hadn't filed it yet. It was totally a, a strange thing. Many things I'm telling him this story as we're going along, telling him what happened, what happened. He's going, wow, wow, whoa, wow. Then we came up to a junction in the road. And this road that comes into Texas from Oklahoma splits. And one part goes to Fort Worth, Texas. The other part goes to Dallas. I need to go to Fort Worth. He needs to go to Dallas. There's a truck stop, I'll get out there. He said, do you mind, really, I, he said, I, I, I just want to hear the end of this story. Do you mind if I just go ahead and take you to Fort Worth so I can hear the rest of it? <laughs> Again, I have to check my schedule, but it turns out there's this opening and we can go. And I'm still thinking, what is this real? And as we're going along and I'm telling the rest of the story and he's going, man. And all that because you came to Islam. I said, well, I don't know what else to say. He said, that is beautiful. I said, excuse me? <laughs> what, what part of the story did I miss while I was telling it? He said, because, he said, you know what? He said, I'm a reformed church of Latter-day Saints, Mormon. And he said, and really... I'm fed up with my religion. And what you told me about Islam, it sounds amazing. So all he really heard me talking about was the Tawheed, was the answers to the questions that Allah gives you. Is When you come to Islam, the answers are there. But the incidentals that take place in your life, well, those are things that happen in your life. So what? Well, the main thing is, you know there's a law. And you know everything comes from a law. It's all going back to a law. And you've got the real hard evidence there really is God. And that's one of the beauties of Islam. Mm. Your heart is in peace because you know it's all from a law. He said, so all of this is from a law. He said, well, yeah. He said, that's beautiful. How can I know more about this religion? Well, I said, you know, there's some guys I'm staying with right now. I, I didn't even have a house anymore. Didn't have any clothes anymore. And so I told him, we're staying at this house. Come on, let's go over here. And we got there, and the brothers weren't back yet. They were at the masjid, but they'd left food cooking. So the food was all on the stove. And when we went in, served him up the food. We sat there, enjoyed a meal together. He said, well, I really have to go. Do you have any pamphlets or anything about this religion? I said, I, 
don't really know what to tell you. But I saw some things laying there from whammy. You heard of the Nedwat al Alamein Shabab al Islamia. Well, that's my first exposure to those kind of pamphlets. So I gave him some of those. And he said, you know, I'm going to really look into this because this really sounds like something for me. And I sure do thank you. I really appreciate it. And by the way, he was at least 60 miles out of the way from where he needed to be. But he brought me right to the house. And there was a meal waiting for me. A meal, hot meal, waiting for me. Now, I didn't know that was going to happen, did I? No. A few hours before, I was standing out in, in the snow, in the ice. That's, that's the power huh? before. And now here I am in a nice warm house, got food to eat. Mm. And what a lovely ride I had. And maybe he made shahada, I don't know. But if he did, maybe Allah will even count that as me giving effort to somebody to get to Islam. Now, in this story I just told you, did you see any beauty there? No. Huh? <laughs> or did you just hear, oh, this guy had a hard day, and it was really a lot of problems, and blah, blah, blah. No. What if I had not been there? What if I had not been there? And the man fell asleep and had an accident and died and never got to Islam. Hmm. What if? Now that's not the cutter of Allah. This is the way Allah wanted it to happen. It happened according to His plan. I'm just showing you though, if you change anything in Allah's plan, weird things would happen. Allah knows what's best. And if you said, well, somebody died, how could it get worse than that? Worse? They could have lived. Because maybe they died on the fitra. Maybe they died as a Muslim. Or maybe they died and because of their death, other people will get to Islam. Or at least other people won't leave Islam. You don't know and I don't know. It's up to him. Isn't it? The non-believer is the one that has the problem. Muslims really don't have that problem. You get upset. You know, some, my dad died and, and he did die. But you know what? Because I was Muslim, I understood it. And I cried, by the way. But it wasn't like the kind of crying that it would have been when I was not Muslim. You know, oh, why my father? Oh, why this happened to me? No. It was crying like this. I was crying out of happiness that at least he became Muslim before he died. Crying out of happiness because I know, although I'll miss him for a while, we can be reunited in Jannah together. And crying also because I know that this is Qadr of Allah and all of us, we're going to come to this sometime. And by the way, the Prophet ﷺ, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, when his son died and he was holding him, he cried. They said, even you are crying? And he said, all of us, we have our moment of this. We have feelings, we're humans. So yes, you can cry. Everything that you want to know about your life, life in general, or your life in particular, is in Islam. Do you like to know how you're created? And what's going to be your ultimate end in this earth? Do you want to know? It's easy. Allah said in the Quran, the very first words He told you, Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ikra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. Khalaq al-insana min alaq. Here Allah is saying, and these are the first words revealed. Recite in the name of your Lord, the one who is the creator. Created the human beings from an alaq. An alaq is what? Today. You can ask anybody that's in embryology and they'll tell you, yeah, it's that little tiny thing that you can't even see with your eye, but it clings to the wall of the uterus inside of the mother and it forms a blood clot and it's shaped like that little worm-looking thing or leech that they have down in South America. And by the way, all three of those things are alak, alak, alak. And Allah described it before people had microscopes, before people even knew that human beings didn't start out as little teeny people that just grew up big inside of their mother. And Allah described all the trimesters. Allah described all of the shape being in shape and out of shape. Like a chewed lump. 
All of the things that Allah speaks about of you being created are in the Quran. And then your final outcome, where you'll be. He tells you everything along the way, but the ultimate is, Kulu nafsin dayakatumot. Every soul will taste death. Yeah? Wow. What do you want to know? Do you want to know about the creation of Allah? And he tells you about the universe. Do you want to know about the earth? And he talks about the earth. And the sun and the moon, it's all there. Where? In the Quran, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What, how much proof do you need? What does it take for you to catch it? He's given you everything. There's the owner's manual, not only for the human being, but the entire universe. What do you want to know? What you need to know, it's there. It's there. But the most important thing of all is to know that you can communicate directly with him and you do not need an intercessor. You don't need to go through a human being or an animal or a piece of wood or a statue, but you can use your heart and communicate directly with him anytime you want to. Isn't that a beauty of Islam? And the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, he told us an amazing thing. Again, with this same thing, the same focus. Ajib. Amazing is the condition of the believer. Because only good happens to them. When anything good comes their way, they make shukr. Thank you to Allah. But any difficulty, any fitna, major calamity comes their way, they make sabr, which is to be persevering, steadfast, patient. And it's all good for them, he said. But only in the case of the believer. Only in the case of who? The believer. That's the beauty of Islam. That was a very long story, guys. So he's just giving us a story how, how he actually accepted Islam. He said six months into him becoming a Muslim, he went through some hard times, hardship. But that, that doesn't mean Allah is not God. God is the God. Sometimes God makes us go through this situation to test us. To know if we are truly his own, to know if we we, we, will, we will still be on the right path with him or we will backslide, you get it. So, just imagine the examples he gave, you know, through his behavior, through his faith in 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 God, and his belief in Islam. That man was moved to actually learn more about Islam, and he was willing to act accept Islam. It's not that he actually went through a very difficult hardship, but things didn't really go well with him because he had so many things and you know, I, I'm sure he let go of so many things after he became a Muslim because he had so many things, wealth and the rest. And he told us that his mom accepted Islam, his father accepted Islam. And one thing that I also love about the story is when he said, even when his dad died, uh, when his dad went to heaven, like when his dad passed on, he never really felt too bad because he believed, oh, this is a Muslim, he's in a better place and they will surely meet one day. And you know, that's their belief that no matter what happens, every, you know, everybody is just here, temporary. That was a beautiful story. I was really moved by a story, you know, letting us understand that when you are with God, you cannot find everything rosy. If you're serving God, people that serve God go through much more trial in situation than what you expect. Some people always think that, oh, because you, you, are, you are a friend of Allah, you're a friend of God, you're serving God, you know, you pray to Him, you are de you know, dedicated to God, that means you, don't, you will not go through problems. That's not true. You definitely go through problems. That's like, this life is a test. Everything we want to do in this life, we must go through tests, right? If you want to study, study in, in, a, in a school, they will test you. Even at your place of work, if they want to promote you, they will give you a test. So everything about this life is a test. Even our daily activities we do is a test for us to learn better. 
then definitely God will test us to see how strong we can be. It, to see how strong we can be. Like in, in the Bible, God tested Job. Job was one of the nine, like he's like a man after God's heart because he did everything right in the sight of God. God just told the devil to tempt him that I know my, my son, you know, no matter the hardship he faced, he will never backslide. Even though the wife was having double mind, was trying to say, oh, this same God you are serving, and you are still believing in him because he was worldly, but he lost everything just in a day. And God wanted to see how, you know, faithful Job was to him. I don't know what the, maybe the story of Job, I don't know whether it's in the Quran. And I'm, I don't know the name, the name given to Job in the Quran. So if God can actually tempt his own people, his own prophet, can actually let them go through hardship. Even Jesus Christ went through a lot of hardship. He didn't get everything at the platter of gold. There are some times that he needs to work for what he needs to do. You know, he was tempted. He had to, you know, go through fasting, all this kind of thing. So, no matter the hardship, no matter what you go through, God will surely see you through. And now, compare that time and now, and now Allah has elevated. Yusuf Etis, he has elevated him very well. Sometimes, God put us into this day so that, you know, he can charge us up for the next, you know, next project. Maybe he's about to uplift you, promote you. But he wants to see how strong you can be. You know, the higher your promotion, the tougher it will become. That was a beautiful one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.